Hello. Welcome to We Have Issues. I'm Tina. I'm Anthony. And I am Stevie Wildcard. And every week, Steve Wildcard and I get together and we do our best to overcome the various issues and obstacles that life throws our way to get something done. Most recently, we've been working on a supernatural action horror comedy comic called Deathless. We're on issue three, but this week, that's not as important as our wonderful, beautiful, incredible guest, Tina. Tina, welcome to the show. Thank you for doing the incredible, like, first take you did that intro. It was like, wow. (laughs) Like, I'm really good. It's as if you- Minimal to no, minimal to no effort. No effort. And there was no razzing coming from me because she did perfect not even exactly. a little and it's nuts because i mean steven and i've been doing this for 195 episodes now so like it's taken us a while Lousy to understand Lousy. what the heck we're doing and tina just like she came in like a pro and just knocked it out of the park and i feel like you're taking my job and it's fine i don't need like it's, i get it like I actually i could just like shut my camera off and you guys can just talk for a while um all right so now this is this is the official only fans <laughs> i feel like you would do well with an only fans I don't think that's an accurate. Thing. I think I think it drop down in the comments and let us know if Steven <laughs> would do well in OnlyFans. Oops, all hair flips. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> feet pics Listen. I'll send to my dad and do them into thinking they're woman's feet. <laughs> so every week we get together and we talk about making comic books. Great, um, feet are not a girl. <laughs> sorry, it's okay. <laughs> sorry. I was thinking of the Chappelle show with Mickey Free is not a girl. Mickey Free is a man. And I was thinking. Brady's feet are not a girl. Brady's feet are from a man. I'm leaving it all in. I'm leaving it all in. I'm cutting nothing because we're gonna. Pro- we have to practice, Stephen. We we've been talking about doing the show live. Gotta get. I gotta. I gotta figure that out how that's gonna work. Tina, has Stephen told you that we've been talking about that? He has, and I can definitely tell you that that would make me extremely nervous. It it makes me it makes me nervous too. That's kind of why I want to do it. I want to like get over that and just like start because I've what noticed if you that... did one like once a month or like That's quarterly. Yeah. Like we're definitely well. So I want it's like an event. We're, we're gonna start with episode two hundred. That's what I was thinking. Like oh, episode two hundreds are like live show, and then we'll see how it goes, and if anyone's interested, you know, showing up. But um, but yeah, I, I just feel like that should have been the episode that I was on. Like it's special. I mean, it'll still be special. You can be on episode. I'll just 200. take one ninety five. I guess five short of perfection. Tina takes one ninety five. Are right. you know what? Let's just skip ahead five episodes. Welcome to episode two hundred. We have issues. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, okay, let's see where we. <laughs> <clears throat> all right guys so every week we get together and talk about uh you know trying to make comic books and all the stuff that gets in the way and you know like various life issues uh, so what have you guys been up to this week anything crazy happened anything interesting I've just been hanging out playing nintendo. playing nintendo no i've been uh hustling and grinding on the issue this week um did you draw on it or did you just grind it did you like i just grinded it i, I took our it. issues that we had copies of and i just like ran them through the grinder and make oh, I was us. thinking like grinding. That's why were you thinking grinding? I was honestly that's... thinking that too. That's like I was like Stevens bumping and grinding yes. the issue, and that's what so I was going for. Because like, I... like like genuine's pony is like playing in the background. It has to be. <laughs> so Steven, you know, all that grinding, <laughs> all that grinding that you were doing, Stephen. Uh, so how how did it go? Did you get some stuff done? Yeah. So I got a page. Well, because I only had half of a page last week, but I got a full page and a half done this week. Nice. Tina, how many pages did you grind? I grind all the pages. That's before they're sent out. That's customary. We should add that to the Kickstarter. Like, I'm pretty sure that would, like, boost our numbers. (laughs) Like, that should be one of the tiers in the Kickstarter. Like, grinded by, ground by Tina. What? (laughs) If you want a snail trail left on your comic book issue, go ahead. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I let us there. Okay, okay, okay. Um, oh Let's boy. see how much I can get him to edit out of this episode. It's a, shockingly little. Is the... <laughs> hurt my cheeks. She she acts so hard. That's why I did it. She acts like she. I was grinding. <laughs> like you know, I drop like, something just a little. I I can dish it out, but I I certainly cannot take it. That's up for debate. Wow. I mean, I don't know where you're going with that, but I'm going to leave it all in just for you. <laughs> but, <laughs> but okay. Uh, so, you know, Steve and I usually talk about stuff and we have a bunch of different, different, different nonsense that we do. One of the things we do is that like, sometimes we pitch ideas on the show. So, Tina, I'm going to, I'm just going to be honest with you. I need your help this time. Like, like I've been, 
I've been toiling away with this stupid idea where I'm not, I shouldn't say stupid idea. I like, I like, I like the, the beginning of this. I think the concept is cool and simple and fun, but I need you guys to help me understand like which version of it to do. So, so you have the bones and you need the flesh. Yes. Um, so I need you guys yes. to give me your meat. Um, give me, give me some meat. Um, so Steve, I am good at doling out meat. I know you are. Thank you, Tina. Um, for confirming the thing that I already said, and I'm pretty sure everyone took my word for it, but okay. <laughs> right. you, you knew about the meat doling before I was ever in the picture. That's right. Uh, I was doling out meat still- left, right, and center. <laughs> I was helping him. I was his left, right, and center. No, uh, so, <laughs> but okay, Stephen, will you hit us with the sweet pitches get stitches? Ooh. There's a tent in the woods and it needs a pitch. Possibly a stitch, cause the flap was ripped by a bear. It's pitches get stitches, and Anthony will tell a story filled of dreams. He's gonna fill it in with his boat. And... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> His pitches get stitches. Anthony, Anthony like interrupted my incredible song. By the way, this is all part of the song. He interrupted that incredible song with his face. I couldn't keep going. <laughs> well, when you... and that's pitches get stitches. When you when you went from like, who, what kind of what genre am I into? Oh, I'm in a show tune. I was like, I'm dead now. Like you just you murdered me. Like you're on stage. I get it, and I'm with you. And this is incredible. <clears throat> oh my god. Okay, so for those of you joining us for the first time. For those of you joining us for the first time, every once in a while, we uh, we, we, we try to share an, a, a random idea for a story. It could be a movie, a book, a, you know, whatever, a musical, you know, whatever it may be. Um, just something I've been thinking about that I just like a concept that I can't I can't shake from my stupid brain. Usually, usually they have like a funny, punny, like, like the, the title and a, there's, it comes together. This one's not going to be that. It's not going to be as satisfying. But I want my friend's help uh, because this is. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, give you a little extra context here. What I want. What I want to do is I want a, a, a story to film in my car, just like we're going to film Stakeout, right? I want it to be super short and just something that'll work for me personally as a test. So when I'm by myself, I can test lighting, test sound, do that kind of stuff and get that out of the way and practice a little bit. So I feel more confident when we get together and do it like for real, you know? So I was like, I need an idea. I don't just want to sit in my car and talk to myself because it doesn't feel real. I, I want to like, you know, put the camera places and make it feel like a real movie. Um, so I was like, I need a concept. So imagine it's me and I go to get in my car, like I'm, I'm going to work. And as I get in my car, I, I, I always get in butt first. I don't know about you guys. What, do you know which way, like how you get in the car? Do you go head first? An 80 year old does. I get in butt. I go no, side. I yeah, go side? I yeah, get like inside. I, I go side. That's yeah, what I mean. Yeah, first. yeah okay. Technically, I was imagining you like backing up. Like backing up. Like, and like sitting and then like swinging. Like why is he around. doing this? <laughs> no, so, but like, okay. So yeah, so I get in like side, but you know, so, and I, I, I close the door. And when I look ahead, like as I get ready to start the car, I look forward and there's a note taped to my, my steering wheel. And first of all, I'm like, okay, that's already. It's, it's, it's like always sunny music. And then it gets trafficked. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time someone tried, honestly. Um, but okay. So, <laughs> uh, but so so I, I look in so i look at the note and it says don't look in the back seat which would be i think a good title for this just because it's like provocative you know just like don't look in the back seat so it says don't look in the back seat which of course everyone in the whole universe would immediately look in the back seat right like, like you turn like panicked turn and as i turn and look in the back seat there's just another note sitting in the back seat and i'm like what the hell is going on like it's like who's messing with me and i like so i'd probably be like ah okay like at this point i'm like all right it's a prank it's steven or something you know so i open up the note and it says i told you not to look in the back seat now you have to be punished or something like that you know so then it's like look in the glove box and i'm like okay well now i'm like, I'm a, like a scary scavenger hunt. Exactly what it is. So it's like a scary scavenger hunt, which is a thing that I could do all by myself with some paper and a pen, you know? So um, I'm just, you know, so I'm in the car. I So I open up the glove box and 
you can imagine where it could go from there. I could get text messages. I could get like picture, like someone could send me a picture of myself in the car and it could be weird. They could say, don't leave the car or else, you know, whatever. My question to you is, what do you think would be a, a good ending for this? Like, what do you think is a satisfying, and mind you, it is just a short, so it doesn't, it, it doesn't have to be great, but you can imagine the various endings, right? It's like someone from my past that I've wronged, or it could be a complete random person who's just causing chaos, right? Like it could literally end with someone walking down the street with a bag of notes doing it to every car. You know what I mean? Like I just like that. right? Like I think so, but like my question to you is, is that would that be good? Would that be satisfying for like to be like, because my character would be spiraling, right? Like going through reading all these notes, trying to figure out who did this, why they're torturing him, like who wants something from him. And of course, if that's the case, there wouldn't be text messages. It would just be a series of notes and like someone leaves them every mm-hmm. car. Right? I think that if you were to to do it that way, that as you're spiraling, you should be going through like the checklist of people yeah. it could be. For sure. And, and like- so that way the audience is trying to like figure out like, oh, it's probably that person because of the this color pen they use or like whatever correlation they're going to try to make. But then it just turns out being right. Like, and I rando. and it's funny because like, dude, like, I'm glad you said you liked it because like, I like that too. But I'm oh, I'm, I just I know I know I've read enough bad reviews in like of movies I love that I know there's going to be a huge percentage of people if they watch it, which like think I'd be thankful if they did at all. But like, let's just say a bunch of people watch it. There'd be a big percentage of people who are like, what a dumb ending. Like it didn't even matter. Like that was stupid, you know, or whatever. Like it wasn't personal or whatever. But what do you what think? If, Go on. What if you make it just like really bad? And so then it's like the room status. That's true. I could become famous by me. And you know what? I might do that by mistake with Stakeout anyway. You know, like Miss Stakeout is going, that's the title of the documentary when we're (laughs) Miss Stakeout. (laughs) I think it should, I think it should end with someone just what you're saying to some extent, like someone's just messing with people there. He's not even paying attention to the victims he's doing this to. So this whole short film is like you panicking, freaking these notes are terrible terrifying like this person's watching me like he's, right. he's writing these things that makes it sound like he's watching me or, or and right. you can make him loosely believable and then it really should just end with like two kids not even like a grown-up just like two little kids writing notes and throwing them into people's cars that would be creepy i mean i think it would have to be like believable age kid you know like i don't know like, yeah. that's 12. You know, like teenagers, like teenagers, maybe. I mean, that because I, I do like the idea of like something like that where it is random, like someone who's just doing that to everyone. And it only affects people with like a guilty conscience or like people who, you know, like so like my character could be kind of spiraling, thinking like, oh, my gosh, like, who did I wrong? Who wants to hurt me? Why? And then I'm just like kind of screaming in my car, like stuck, not knowing what to do as it pans out. And you see this person or these kids or whoever it is walking down the street you know kind of like finding the next unlocked car and like that's all it was like you should lock your car you know <laughs> like or else you could also always go like the michael scott route where he like calls all his exes to tell him that he has herpes, herpes. <laughs> you know and it's like you're like calling your different different people and stuff like that like trying to figure out and like that's true i them and stuff that's true i the only problem with that is I'm tr- I want it to be just me in the car. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm trying to make it just mm-hmm. super limited. You know, that's so like I can do text messages, you know, like I just want it to be a simple like five minute thing. That's not it's not long. It's just like a kind of short and sweet. I'm not going to like spend a lot of time on it. It should only take me like an hour to write the thing. And then like the notes are easy to put together, you know, so like that way I could just practice and which I, th- I I want to do you know because I'm 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 scared I'm scared Tina um but yeah I think that's so what do you think do you think should it be called looking like don't look in the back seat or I don't have like a punchy I like that like I think it, I think don't look in the back seat's kind of modern and like uh I mean it's direct but also kind of like provocative it is like it's a little like okay why why not and what's in the back seat is it something you know or it could end I like the ending of like someone walking away as like with a bag of notes as if they're doing it to a lot of people. 
maybe even like opening the next one to set a note down that would work or you could literally have my character be like this is just a stupid prank this is stupid this is stupid i'm not going to care about this anymore and then like as i start my car to like drive in the trunk area not the back seat but the trunk area someone sits up like <laughs> like creepily you know like as if they're going to kill me because i did start the car even you know and they told me not to Anthony, it is it is late at night to be telling such spooky <laughs> stories tina won't even watch like thrilling movies this time of night oh okay okay so for those of you who made it this far in the episode comment below and let me know which ending you think would be fun or what wh what idea you like about that because I'm, I'm not super precious about this i just think it's like a fun thing to do as a, as, as a practice short film like that, that way we can i feel more confident going into to making you know stake out with everyone if you want if you wanted to keep it like in like the horror like shitty because like horror movies end shitty like in a sense yeah. of like it never really ends well for the hero mm -hmm. you could make it basically like a prank gone wrong where it does seem like it's this murderous person this murderous person and then the last note that you decide to finally not adhere or listen to like you just start driving frantically and you die or, or something crazy happens and then the last note is the reveal that your friend really was just messing with you mm -hmm. but your own conscience and your own like i see yeah i see what you're saying your That's... own fear got the best of you basically and it would have to be yeah that one's a little harder to pull off with the with like the ending because i imagine there'd have to be some kind of like car crash or something you know something yeah. like that that's what, like, you know. you, what if you did it like in a lake and you just got yourself like a little little hot wheels <laughs> like, the, like in a, do a miniature just, nah. I, I believe in you i think you could do that just edit in like a public domain car crash sequence of like that would be so funny like so like hair. So in but make it like really like insane and like cut it together multiple times. It just blows like, up. It just keeps happening. It's like the <laughs> in trauma, the people who made Toxic Avenger and stuff. Uh they like for the movie Sergeant Kabuki Man, they have this car that like does a flip and, and like blows up, and then they just literally reuse it in every single movie because it costs so much for them to to do that. They're just like, no, we're just gonna <laughs> we're gonna use this in every movie. Get a green car every time. It's so funny. But all right, thank you guys for helping me with that. That's enough of me. We have Tina here, and we have a billion questions for her from the colony. So every once in a while, we get together and did like we we ask the community out there, those of you watching right now, we're like, hey, ask us questions in the comments, ask us on Twitter, ask us wherever you you want. Find us in the street. Don't find us in the street. Find me in the street. Um, don't 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 mess with 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 Stephen. Come on, he's find he... me in the sheets. That's right. I mean, Stephen, mm. <laughs> sexy. Okay, so but find us. Ask us questions wherever you want. These people. These lovely people asked us several questions specifically for Tina. And Stephen, will you hit us with the sweet questions from the Colony song? There's a new member. Well, she's not that new. She's been around for a while. So I'll tell you the news. It's the questions we got for the new goddess of the Colony. So the colonists say, hey, Queen Tina, we got some questions for you. And it's going to be tough. I hope you got your brain and mouth ready to answer these questions. This mouth one was a little weird to say, but it's <laughs> questions from the Colony. Featuring Stephen T. Tina and Anthony every day. That's how it ends, ends the word every day. Sometimes you can't explain it. You can never explain that magic, Stephen. It's just too good. It just <laughs> even every time you've done that song. Of you serenading me. Yeah. I, I honestly like as you were doing that, I was like, I kind of hope he just does this the rest of the time. Like I hope we don't get to the questions. Like I just let's just keep going, and at the end it's we'll just an say hour like freestyle. Yeah. Dude, we should just do a whole. We have issues where like Stephen hit us with that sweet sweet episode song, and I just episode Steven, song. It. Stephen, it we have been talking about episode two hundred or like doing a musical part of the episode. It would be pretty funny to just do that. Like, all right, guys, this is our <laughs> musical episode. So Stephen, go ahead, <laughs> take it away. <laughs> <laughs> okay so so tina our our incredible friends and fans and listeners and viewers uh have all these questions for you are you prepared my my mouth is ready so i'll be you are not prepared. so first off we have levi levi asked us what's the one thing steven does that makes you want to jump his bones 
like hopscotch, like like jump rope over those bones, just hopping over them. That's what he, that's what they mean. Like there, there's a lot of things he does, but there's I almost don't even want to say because I don't want you to like do it. That makes voluntarily. sense voluntarily. Oh, yep. But there's this one thing that he does where he like kind of breathes in through one nostril and it like hikes his cheek cheek up like ever so slightly and it, he looks so handsome <laughs> i'm not to do that naturally he, so she has no <laughs> and, like sometimes he's looking at me when he does it and i'm like I like steven has a deviated that. septum and sometimes there's only one of the nose nasal passageways isn't fully blocked <laughs> It's good. Okay. Uh, I think that was a fantastic answer. I can't recreate that, so you're perfect. Okay. Um, Tina and Steven, I'll open this to you as well. If you could fly, would you poop on people? Not intentionally. Right? Why are we pooping in the sky? Why are we doing this? Well, I mean, pooping it's kind of like any anywhere else. I mean, if you're in flight and there are we flying to you? Wait, I just assumed we would be birds. We would just be us flying. Yes, yes I would not poop in, in public like that. No way. Like I would just fly to the nearest bathroom. Yeah. I might poop on an enemy or two. Listen. I might. If I was alone over open water, maybe. If, and I, if like, really and like in the, had to go. That would be an emergency because you're over open water already, right? Like I, I'm but imagining I, Levi's thinking like like angry or like hilarity like ha ha i'm gonna poop on people if that were the case if i'm going to drop any droppings on people at all if i'm going to be like ha 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 like stink from above situation it's going to be like a premeditated uh bombing i'm mm-hmm. I'm going to have it with something, me something i, yeah, I, have I to do could. it i have to do it now i already yeah. have it yeah i brought this poop I brought this. <laughs> this is, I'm, yeah. not, I'm, not I'm gonna write a made. message and everything <laughs> I, I, I'm not pooping. I pooped and I <laughs> saved it for you. Something I could see myself doing though, like when I was still nursing my children, if I could fly, is maybe like squirting some some milk on people. I feel like dude. I feel like I would have thought that was. She used funny. to hit you with that milk all the time, and he would get so angry. It was never funny to him. It was never cute. He there's a super soaker of my nightmares. He would he would tell me, listen to this. He would say, "That's like peeing on somebody. It's milk. I don't feed my child urine. Your milk's sterile. My pee is sterile. Thought is is there. (laughs) Okay, okay. Levi said, "Why do you think people love this show so much? Why do you think Tina? Why do people like this show?" Um. Well, I think. A large part of the reason is because the the hosts are so incredibly handsome. So eye candy. Um, in, in addition to that, the two of you have really wonderful banter. And like, you get along so well. And the way you feed off of each other. like, And just as someone who has spent a lot of time with the both of you together, there have been times over the years where I just like, I watch my own personal podcast. The, the Anthony and Steven show. It's, it's true not, though, because she's on like episode two thousand and thirty. <laughs> oh, it's so, it's so true. I get, it's it's amazing. Like every like every time when it's not a family gathering, and even then sometimes, but like every time like we, we hang out, there's always there are always at least a couple of moments where I'm just crying at the dinner table and just like <laughs> laughing, just like what? Or how did we get here? This is like seven in jokes just, now. I don't know how this happened. We're so but, many yeah. layers deep. This is this is my, this is my mom's famous seven layer dip. <laughs> <laughs> it's just yeah, it's one of those things where it's like it's impossible to get to that place on a podcast without feeling like oh god, we had just ostracized, like we alienated a whole planet. Like there's no way anyone's with us, right? <laughs> Maybe I don't know. All right, let's see. Uh, no, I, I feel like I feel like people like that though. I feel like I they hope. like being in on the inside jokes and and things like that. And I mean, if you look at like some of the like bigger podcasts like the basement yard and stuff like that like they've been friends since they were kids and Mm. they have these like inside jokes and talk about their families and stuff Mm. like that and like it's fun and funny and so i think the same charm that something like that has is the same thing that the two of you bring to the table not to mention you're crazy talented so there's that to like back it up as well what do you think of that robin (laughs) tina what are your biggest fears Gangsta's Paradise by Coolio. Okay, I was like four. 
but that is that was i was afraid of the song gangster's paradise no i was afraid gangsta's of, paradise i was afraid of and that actually the chick on jeopardy got that that's wrong why i'm correcting you. gangsters yeah it is not gangsters paradise it's gangsta. it's gangsta's paradise yeah wow but I, right no after listening to that song and being like mommy what's a gang and then knowing what a gang was, I was just very afraid of gangs. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. When you say this, when you're like, after asking my mom, I was suddenly terrified. Like, I imagine <laughs> she gave you a, like, three-hour TED Talk about why gangs are bad. <laughs> She's just like, well, gangs when mommy was guy. 15. <laughs> like, wait, what? No. Dude, does anyone remember, like, Gangland for a second there? Like, in the, oh, yeah. In the 2000s? Like, gangland. I'm like, oh, my God, MS-13, I'm done. Like, they're coming for me specifically for some reason. Yeah, These gangs are scary. Yeah, Gangland oh. was crazy. No, but for real, my, my greatest fears, I am horribly, horribly claustrophobic. Horribly. Horribly claustrophobic. Like, sitting in a car too long is yeah. rough, kind of claustrophobic. It's very frustrating. Um, like gets in an elevator and puts her head down and closes her eyes and counts. Oh, okay. Hang on. Wait, I have to say, cause like, it's going to like, it's going to bother me if I don't, when you said that, when you just said like, oh, they're coming for me, like about the gangland, dude, I just had like this crazy flashback because this, this is a true story. This actually happened to me in middle school. And I literally just have never thought about it. It's like, like core memory. <laughs> it just disappeared. Dude. Okay. So I, I when I was in Coral Springs, I went, I went to Sawgrass Springs uh, Middle School and I used to walk, I used to walk home and I'd, I'd like, it was like, you know what, you know, after school when you're just like, I'm super excited to get home and I'm just or like, you know, I'm like, you get home, you play video games and you watch Power Rangers and whatever, you know, like, you're like, this is the best part of my life, you know? So I was like, every day I'd walk home and I was like, super excited for that. I'm like, here we go. And I'd pass by this like ice skating ring and they'd always have like the big pile of ice from the Zamboni, which is the closest to snow I still have ever been in my life. And like, <laughs> I would like play on the snow and I'd like, haha, and I'd like throw stuff. And it was like this like cute, like middle school, like I'm in sixth grade, like, look at me go. And like, so I'd go and one day, one day I'm walking by and I'm, I pick up my snow and I'm like, haha, and I'm playing with my snowball and I'm walking. And as I'm going, I see like, seven to 12 guys all wearing orange ski caps beating someone up in the field next to me and one i someone one someone and they're all wearing white t-shirts orange ski caps and like random jeans and stuff i don't know i, I only noticed they the were jumping them in and they were i don't know what they were doing they were killing this man it seemed to me um the, the thing i remember the most was literally watching like fists and, and like kicks. And then one person jumped up with both feet and just like, as he like landed on the guy, I ran. It was just, like one of those, like drop my snowball. Like it's gone. And just ran. I don't belong here. I was like, I don't belong here. I was like, Bye. and it's so weird. Cause it was like one of those, it was such a, like, it's such a silly, innocent thing that like I did every single day. And then suddenly there was this like, terrifying like darkness there it's like just like holy crap what is this virus pure evil it like, was like... so weird dude and like and you know what's crazy it's like i continued to walk that way after school it was just like oh, they were only there once they'll never be and i never saw them there again i don't know what happened i don't know why they were there i never heard of that again like no one ever said anything i it was crazy so anyway that just that the orange cap see yeah <laughs> right like i don't know what the heck that was so uh, claustrophobia i i don't have like claustrophobia i don't like being like like uh with strain like with, like, like confined i don't like it either i don't like that like if i feel like i can't move like if the blanket's on me a weird way and i'm like oh i can't move my foot i get mad like i'm like ah that's the closest to, like claustrophobia i get you know but um i don't know all my other fears are like kid based i think you know like you got yeah you know, losing like, uh, a child is probably the I greatest mean, those fear. are like the obvious. those are the given losing, yeah. Still, yeah that's why i said the other losing a child for sure it's all the yeah it's all like the stereotypical stuff that's why like i don't have like i don't know steven do you have any like weird fears that people might not imagine outside of like the parent thing and like the the husband thing um irrational fears or just crazy fears heights i do I didn't used to be afraid of heights when I was a kid. I used mm. to climb trees. I used to do all that stuff. Like I, I loved it. And then one day I was when I was in my early twenties, I was delivering a pizza and I was on like the seventh story of a building. And it was like one of those buildings that, and I'm tall. So like the handrail was only like three feet tall, it seemed. And like, I felt like I could just fall right over it. And like, I just sudden fear of heights out of Ugh. nowhere. I was never afraid of heights. And now, now I hate heights. I, I yeah. can't stand them. So. 
Oh, Even like sweet. getting on an escalator well, sometimes, like when an escalator's on the second or third floor, like I get freaked you can out like doing that first that. step. Yeah. That kind of that Do does you that... have like nightmares about like no? heights or anything like that. No. I mean, I used to have recurring nightmares about like my teeth falling out and like growing. I remember when that was like happening to you. Yeah. That was it, it was yeah. crazy. And I started like lucid dreaming because of it. That was a whole weird thing that happened. That was very strange. Um the other the other thing that I can say that's a weird fear that I have is like um what I'm afraid of like small animals or like babies. Like I just don't want to ever like hurt something by mistake. Mm. You know, like you know, like that. I'm I'm so scared. And I think it's because like when I was super young, I accidentally hurt a hamster because it bit my neck and I was like, ah, like yeah, it was one of those. So I think that's what happened. But like I do have that like weird like timidity. Like 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 I don't know. I'm just nervous around like fragile things, you know. I just don't Okay, Levi also asked, how do we get Steven to quit his job sooner? Levi, that is a fantastic question. Mm -hmm. I love this question. I think that Steven should answer this one. I don't have an answer for this one. We still need the, I still need to unfortunately make money to, to be able to be a responsible family, you know, like, I mean, Stephen is concerned about providing for our family, which is very legitimate and very admirable. Um, if I can just ask, if you guys can drop into the comments, how much would you like to pay for commissions? And how often do you feel like you would need them? But there's, it's just, it's such a weird transition. Like, I, I know. I don't think it's in the cards right now. He, he, he feels like, it kind of has to be an all or nothing nothing sort of thing because we've discussed him like maybe cutting down a day or two, you know, and like I'm certainly willing to like pick up more time behind the chair if necessary. I just feel like it's one of those situations where like I can't do the throw it all in and go for it thing anymore because I am a father. I have two kids. The whole like I'm just going to risk it all and go for it. And if I fail, I fail like it. I can't do that anymore, but I, I just need to like, we just need to get to a point where I feel like we're not living. We're not quite living paycheck to paycheck, but we're also, we'd sign like we have, you know, there's a lot of things we don't have. And yeah, that's where I'm at with it personally. Oh, fair enough. I do have to say, I think that you balance everything that you have going on. I do. So, so well. And he, I have to tell you guys, he is, still such an attentive husband and father and brother and son and all of the roles that that he fills and a friend like he's still very and how i there. keep it in check is i'm a serial murderer and it's true we go out know, together and do that that's what our friend <laughs> time is we murder we're called dexters that's what we call ourselves and they wear orange hats and we wear orange hats and white shirts <laughs> So okay, they know uh, our gang name was Dexters <laughs> with an A. <laughs> with an A. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're gonna miss so, that Jeopardy question. That's Run. right. So <laughs> okay, Tina, Tina, last question, or oh, there is one more. Okay, what makes you smile? A hundred percent, Stephen. Like hands down, in so many ways. Um, I don't know. I feel like I I smile a lot. You know why I smile a lot? Because it's worth, worth it. it. I would say things that make Tina smile are me, not the kids, believe it or not. No, just kidding, not the, the kids. Um, hospital shows. It doesn't matter if it's Meredith Grey or some Chicagoan. I like garbage TV. I like stuff that sucks. Taylor I really Swift. Do. I do like Taylor. I'm a fan of Taylor. And. Coheed. Coheed. And. Going, seeing Coheed live or Prize Fighter live oh, yeah. is definitely like that smile. It, like my cheeks hurt by the end of the day. Like, oh yeah, I know we, we do have a my face. we do have a Coheed question coming later. Um, okay, last yeah. one from Levi. Barrel versus Coacula. Who's winning? Both in a regular fight and in a hug fight. So, it, which form would Barrel be in? I'm this? not. Let's give Barrel everything. Barrel's the final demon monster bear stuffy unicorn stone having creature coacula is a god yeah okay coacula is the god of ostriches i feel like because i have barreled on my body that that's what she even if it. i don't believe it barreled would win 
That's what I saw. I'm imagining the situation from Thor Ragnarok where Blackula is destroying an entire planet and Barold is just the Hulk running and jumping, <laughs> you know, in vain to 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 even put a, a dent in Quackula's armor. So I can see uh Bar Barold in the plushy form being the best hugger though. Definitely yes. a better hugger. Oh yes, we forgot about the hugging question. Quackula is terrible at hugs. He has he has wings for arms. He can't hug you. I feel like he would want to hug me though. Would like, you want to be hung yeah. by a chicken wing? I feel like he would be gentle enough with me specifically. It's fair. Not to my wait, wait, wait. What about his care? I I think that Quackula would probably primarily hug with his neck. He's a necker. He's like because you imagine mm. like he has that long Ooh, like yeah, it's a around. it's a thick wrap around like a big like a nice like muscly arm of a neck that would wrap around you like a like a hugging snake. You know, like a yeah. like, word on the street is too that Quackula hums hums the Phil Collins song from the Tarzan uh, soundtrack. Like, come stop your crying it'll be all and it just wraps its neck around you that sounds so comforting just take that... my neck so you're Hold you're saying it. are we are we saying that barrel loses on all fronts then is that no barrel wins the hugs but Quack i think barrel would still win the hug, neck hug with a tarzan sound right. <laughs> <laughs> okay okay let's Bill move Collins on wrote that song for coacula i mean that's just <laughs> that's what everybody knows that it's in the wikipedia so it's going to be tonight <laughs> add it everyone if you're watching this right now go add that to it i don't care where you are cite, what, cite it gonna... cite it in other <laughs> articles too <laughs> <the game>. <laughs> <laughs> Make AI believe it's true. <laughs> okay, so pay Phil Collins to say it on like uh, <laughs> five, whatever the the, the cameo cameo or cameo. Um, okay, <laughs> Daily Dow Downing ugh. Daily Downing asked because I'm too embarrassed to ask Stephen directly. Seriously, just have her answer it. Tina, this is just for you. This band called Coheed and Cambria. He keeps going on about, and I I have no idea what that is. Sorry, Stephen. So explain. Okay. Cody and Cambria is the greatest band to have ever existed and likely will ever exist. Um, you should just set aside a day, get yourself some good headphones, comfy blanket, scotch if you drink it. Maybe some cocoa. Maybe, ooh, maybe some cocoa. A little, little and, and just cuddle up and listen to some Coheed, man. What I love about Coheed is they have something for everybody, in, in my opinion, because they've evolved so much as a band while still kind of keeping their own sound. I feel like they've done that so well because they have such a large discography that for them to be able to maintain like a signature sound that they do have but that evolution of their music is just they're they're crazy talented crazy talented. coheed is like prog rock meets like pop pop chorus i'm sorry were you allowed to answer this one oh uh, you don't talk to me like that in my room That's sorry sir sure. yes sir sorry sir <laughs> you have no power here <laughs> Everywhere the light touches is your kingdom. <laughs> nice. I, What's no, that I think... shady room full of guitars? That's the wild thing, Tina. You must never go there. <laughs> <laughs> you must never go there. So, oh, thank, you. thank you for joining us in the Elephant Graveyard, Tina. We appreciate it. <laughs> um, but, uh, no, that's a, that's a great answer. You make a, like... I, it's it's so interesting like when you talk about things that we love like Cody and Cambria you're like you know when you try to share movies or like like shows that you like and just like ah, you you have to let yourself experience a, a decent amount of it to get a taste you know you can't be like you know it's it's like do you like going to the beach well not always but I do have some fond memories of the beach and you know like I can imagine it's, it's some people's favorite thing in the world you know so it's like it's really it's it's weird you know because I I want everyone to listen to Cody and Cambria and be like Yes, I understand exactly what they're saying. This is the best music in the world. But I know someone's going to put on one, right? Like, they're going to put on, like, Here We Are Juggernaut and be like, ah, this is a lot of noise right away. But then they're going to be like, oh, Here I We Are Juggernaut. Like that's why it's important to ask people what kind of music they typically yes. listen to. So you can kind of give them a place to start. So you yeah, should you know? comment daily. You should comment on this video in particular. And I will make sure Tina logs in and give you a recommended song list. Mm-hmm. 
after you let her know some bands that you like. So in like, the just as a, for instance, my best friend, Jack, she was never really a Coheed fan. She primarily listens to just rap. Like she's just, did you, did you know Jack can rap anyway? Um, but she's a huge Paramore fan. Cool. So I had her listen to love protocol and it's on her playlist. Every playlist she makes, she puts love protocol on there. And I just nice. think that that's so precious. It is. No, that I totally agree. And yes, daily. If you, if you think of any bands, um, comment below, if not, I'll, I'll tell you some songs later. No pressure, but comment some bands or songs if you can. Um, we should each pick a song for daily to listen to. That's yes, what we'll do. I agree. I think that's a great idea. Good thing. Smashing. Okay. Um, actually, since I mentioned it already, I'm going to say listen to the acoustic version of Here We Are Juggernaut. It's Good. one of my favorite it's, Coheed. It's uh, very beautiful. It's incredible. It's like, it's You're so the Black Rainbow as a whole, as that album kind of just suffers from overproduction in my in my opinion like i still love it but like that album just has a lot of noise on it and it's yeah. cool because it's all part of the atmosphere right but a lot of those songs actually just sound better live like here yeah. even when they play the full electric here we are drinking on it sounds and that is one thing like seeing coheed live it and i know this sounds oh. like i'm maybe overselling it but like mm. it really is life-changing it no, really I, is like um, I, I liked coheed and then I saw them live and that, that was it. Like, like they're, that's a, they're injected into my veins now. That's a good point, Tina. Okay. Also daily, go listen to in keeping secrets silent or three live, go watch a live video of mm. them playing that and like have it in just for the, just for the vibes. 100% dude. Like I've, if, I, if, I, if, anybody, if any of time. you follow me on TikTok, I have a couple, um, I think I have two videos from Coheed shows that are live at our shows and they're like 10 seconds long. Do yourself a favor. They're dope. Steven, what song would you say? It really does depend on the person, but like one of my go-to songs for Coheed that I feel like is just fast paced, cool, awesome riff, awesome vocals, awesome thing is No World for Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I, I think that song is just so it's awesome. Banger. It's quick. It's, okay. it, it, it hits a bunch of different things and it's yeah. For me, it de it depends on my mood, I suppose. But you know, Same. of course. But like, Gravity's Union and Grave Makers and Gunslingers. I love those. Those two yes. two songs just always like hit for me. Grave Makers has an that's an amazing intro riff. But yeah, oh, yeah. No, there's a lot of Coheed. She has to comment on like bands that she likes, and then we can go from there. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Oh, all right, let's see. So our good friend Edwin at Lost Between Worlds asked. These questions are for both of you. Uh, what was one moment that made you realize that he and she uh, was the one? Like, what? how did you guys know? What's one moment that made you definitely realize that? I have mine. Do you want me to go first? You can go first. Literally, and again, with the cliches, but like, it was love at first sight for me. Um, as I've been friends with Steven's sister since we were like eight years old. But I didn't meet Steven until I was like 17. And so I came over to her house and I had been there before, but Steven wasn't there. Um, and I walked into her house and Steven was just standing there playing his guitar, like rocking out. And I literally was like awestruck. And I, within a minute, like looked at Sarah and was like, I'm going to marry your brother. It's exactly what I said to her. You can ask her. And she succeeded. Said, All right. Don't hurt yourself. Well, like, be, I don't know. Like, I was, I, he's I was like, in he's it. like, when you Once walked decided, in here tonight, when you came in here tonight, you look pretty good. And I was pretty sure I love you. You're the no, one. No, because, like, I'm thinking about, like, well, I, like, I don't think he's still, he's still not sure. He's still, I, I basically just waited until I decided, like, I didn't want to live without her. And then, like, when I chose to like, go out with her, that was just me choosing her for life. Like, it's, I've never been, like we'll see where this progresses or we'll see where this goes like once i decided to date her i dated her with the intent of it being forever you know what and I'm you saying? realize so you want to spend the rest of your life with someone you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible was... so but what was what was that moment that made you decide that like, i think is is the question that edwin wants to know <sighs> we love edwin <laughs> there's no moment in particular that's what i'm saying Same. it's like droning Okay, okay, okay. Let's, aside, so what is the biggest argument 
you've ever had um, and how was it resolved that you're willing to share here? I think this is a good one because it was a situation where we were both wrong. Um, That's funny. It was when we, it was <laughs> when we, we, we had only been dating for not even a year yet. And I went to California with my friend and I had a layover and during my layover, I called him and I literally like my layover was just walking to my next gate and then getting right on the plane. It was like, you know, 15 minutes or something crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and he didn't answer. And so at that point in time in our relationship, you know, if I would call him on my break or something, oftentimes he wouldn't answer because he was playing WoW, World mm -hmm. of Warcraft. And so I felt really frustrated and mad. So jaded. And I left him a really vitriol, really nasty voicemail. Nasty. Um, about him not answering and choosing wow over me. And, and it was a whole, and it was a whole thing. It was a whole like thing. And now on my end, yes, I was like slipping up left and right when it came to that. But this particular moment, I literally was like, all right. Tina is going to be landing and the layover thing is going to be happening within this two hour window. Uh -huh. I'm going to literally play guitar and have my phone right here. And that's exactly what I did. And I'm like waiting, waiting, waiting for the call. I'm like, I'm not going to like go do anything else. I have my phone. I'm going to answer this. I'm not going to fail. And then dude, I swear, I, I think I just ran to the bathroom really quick, like to go pee. And then when I came back, it was, or so, it was like something stupid. It was like a very small interval of time. And I'm already hearing this voicemail. Oh, and I'm just no. like, and I'm trying to call her back and it, she is already on her the next flight. And I'm just sitting in this whole situation where I'm not gonna be able to talk to her for at least another four hours. Oh, no. And she's completely of the impression that like, I completely chose something else over her and all this. And yeah, it was, it was a crazy oh. situation. And then imagine having like a fight like that. And she, she's in California for like a week or two. Oh my God. So we just had this big fight. And I, there's no way to resolve really, or we, we did, we yeah, resolved no. over the phone, yeah. but it was still like, yeah. So was it just resolved we, that by is like, one thing about us is yeah. like, we've never, we've really never like had like a fight that like lasts for days or anything like that. Like on a very, very rare occasion where we have a fight that like lasts all day because like we have to go to work or something like that. But we pretty much like okay well, let's sit down and resolve this you know yeah, we don't go to sleep angry no. no that's good ever like well i'll literally if I, even if i have to work the next morning i'll literally just stay up till four in the morning sorting it out and, and, and admittedly there have been times where like if we're we're not good like we'll both call off work to like sit at home nope. and hash it out i mean that's that's probably smart i mean that's honestly that's what i need and like, I'm really, really bad with like, hey, let's put a pin in this and we'll talk about it in six hours. I'm like, oh, I'm going to dwell on it the whole time. And it's not going to be great. And I'm not going to be better off for it. And neither are you. And our relationship is not going to, it's going to suffer. It's going to be real weird. Um, but yeah, so like, that's, that's good. Edwin's last thing he said was keeping awesome. You two uh, looking forward to hanging out with you again down the road. And then Absolutely. we have you and Stephanie are so awesome. Yes. And Melina's grown up so much. She, she definitely, you all need to definitely come back. Yeah, so for we sure. Dance. We really, really loved having you guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, we haven't been doing, we all have to get together at one of those freaking conventions again. That was so much fun. And then like have them yeah. um, have the pizza. And um, all right, let's see. Charlie Crossbones asked to Steven's better half, which is me. Uh, what is his hair care routine? I'm glad you asked Charlie. Um, no. So <laughs> Tina, uh, Tina, what is Steven's hair care routine? Um, honestly, Steven does a good job of taking care of his hair, mostly by brushing it correctly. He knows how to correctly brush it. She is lying through her teeth. She always cringes when I brush my hair because I just rip. I'm just like, <laughs> really? His, his secret is that he uses good products. That's it. He yeah. I have a hairstylist wife and she buys me really expensive shampoos and conditioners. He, he's good shampoo and conditioner. And that's, that's about the size of it. Nice. I don't know then, if you all know he, he gets his like semi annual like salon experience where I do like eight treatments on his hair because it desperately needs it at that point in time and, and a haircut. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't all know right. if you all have noticed, but I've switched to bunning my hair from work and now I wear it down with a hat. Mm -hmm. And man, I don't have any blonde up here anymore. Color wise, so I blonde see. for yeah. the longest time and it's all gone because of the hat. Now I have like an ombre going on. So, yeah. 
looks pretty nice. Natural hombre. So now we have like a hundred questions from Paige, but let's see, let's see what they are. Um, okay. What do you think makes your relationship so successful and en- enduring? Tell the people what's in the secret sauce. Oh, semen, lots and lots of seminal fluid, not mine. <laughs> I might add. We buy large. <laughs> we buy large. I was going to say it, but I was like, fluid. someone else should. Yeah. So we believe in swimming in a large vat of seminal fluid, like twice a year, it invigorates the soul. Okay, no. I would say, what do you say? It's your question, actually. I'm like, Scrooge oh, McYuck. Fluid. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question? What was it? What makes no, it, said, what's the secret sauce? To our I said Scrooge McYuck because you're swimming around in semen instead of gold. <laughs> At that least we would actually splash into it, unlike the freaking coins. Like, like, come on. Scrooge McCuck, am I right? <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, uh, uh. so what's in the secret sauce, guys? Through God, all things are possible. So jot that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but really, like, I think that our our faith really does support us. You know, when we are weak, we, we lean on that strength that our faith gives us. Um, we're also just both like two people that i think that we're just two people that are genuinely like obsessed with one another like she's literally like my like anthony and her are my best friend i had to make sure to put him in their babe i'm sorry of course of course <laughs> <I> would cry <laughs> i would i would but we're like, that's she, the thing y'all though like i love anthony just as much she does call him her her, her uh boyfriend-in-law right so i get to a good relationship here we go <laughs> let's <laughs> It's like that situation in Parks and Rec. But um, no, like, I think it's like she really is just like one of my f- b- best friends. So like, you know, like you, there's really no, I just want to hang out with her. I just want to see her. Yeah, we like genuinely enjoy each other's company. And I think. And it's us have... against the kids. Like we don't, we, we, we act like. Yeah, like, we're like, a team. We're like oh, kids. Yeah. Like our, our kids are consistently reminded that we love each other more than we love love we love each other more than we love you like (laughs) you're like right there it's like right here slim but it's so close but i love your mother more (laughs) the best it's like an ongoing thing we say it's it's... but i mean and also like we are human so you know there are points in time where you know we are either like getting on each other's nerves or we don't see eye to eye on something and i think that's something we've learned over time is that when we are having maybe an uncomfortable conversation that we really work hard to seek to understand rather than to be understood. And I think that we both have gotten really great at that. And, you know, a lot of grace, a lot of patience, um, and just. And mortal combat. Yep. We just fight each other to the death and then we come back. Through the speaking, seminal fluid. Speaking of, <laughs> oh my gosh, the Lazarus pit of semen. Just, <laughs> okay. Oh my God. Just imagine that scene where Wolverine breaks out of the <laughs> tank, but it's all white and sticky. It's the best podcast <laughs> of all time. You're, you're welcome. At least they ate pineapples. Oh no. Sorry, <laughs> so speak, speaking of um, beating Steven um, and just being badass in general, <laughs> Tino, what's it like being such a baddie? She said, which I imagine is means villain, right? Like you're a super villain. What's that like? You know, it's it's a lifestyle. <laughs> it's... That's why it's called a lifestyle. All right, let me see. Oh, what I is... really have nothing to, T- Tina, to say. Tina, Tina has just like gotten it. She's like, I think she's hit the most like confident stride she's ever had when it comes to her beauty and like her routines and like her like she feels herself now. And like I think that energy has just been exuding lately and like it's something that she's always had, but it's the first time she's actually like seemingly felt this about herself. So I think that's the energy you're sensing. And she's finally becoming wise to how badass she is, which means I got maybe three good years left before hey, I'm tossed. Don't you but... dare. Don't you dare. All right, let's see. So most of them. What are some of your favorite memories and moments as a couple? I don't know. There's there's a lot. New York, honestly, the most recent trip to Jersey was seeing Jimmy and like us going to see Price Fighter in this awesome little New York. Um, like uh, it was so cool, like a little small venue, just taking subways and eating pizza and eating food. That's one thing, is I think a lot of our memories, we're not the kinds of people 
we don't really have time to go on vacations a lot and stuff like that. So we are definitely like foodie people where we just, we eat a lot of good food we and we share a lot of meal. good food. Yeah. So like, I, I think a really nice Vegas memory, was fun too, though. Um, I was thinking when we went to the pink shell, the pink shell was time. awesome. Yes. Well, we went twice and but honestly, both those trips were really, really yes. nice, but it's destroyed now. Thanks Ian. Yeah. But Anytime we get a staycation away from the kids, it's, yeah. it's actually usually a pretty great time. And they're they're all the same. Like we're in bed by eight o'clock. Oh yeah, dude. We're so when we were in Vegas, man. Like, Grant, you were pregnant at the time, but yeah. we're in Vegas and we're in the hotel room at like eight thirty, and she's like watching TV and I'm playing Pokemon on the 3DS. Right. Like, this is the life. I'm just like in the Luxor Hotel playing Pokemon. All right, let's see. Um, Steven brings home ostrich. Uh, Steven brings home. An ostrich, or no, ostrich, as in the meat. Who's cooking it? How? Steven, for sure. Steven's the exotic meat cooker. Nice. How would you? What would I, you... And mo most like most like expensive proteins. Like, and it's not because Tina can't do it. It's because she's like afraid she's gonna fuck it up. So she just like. I hate wasting money. <laughs> yeah, she does. She's really good at rice dishes. She's good at all the other stuff, but she's great at like good rice medley dishes and like stews and like like meals like she's really good at but whenever it comes to protein plus starch i'm the guy but i would probably prepare ostrich. i mean i'm sure like i since i don't have a grill i don't really use a grill i would use a cast iron skillet possibly with a little 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 butter mm -hmm. would you cook it like you would a steak depends i think is ostrich meat like a red meat i can't remember i would imagine it's like Duck. like a i'm imagining but it's like somewhere... a tough duck because they're like strong muscular but they yeah. still have a tenderloin so i mean they, they have to have mm -hmm. a tenderloin on their back and their breast meat's probably pretty you know anyways <laughs> salt pepper and garlic that's there the you go that's that always the, yeah okay <laughs> let's see uh tina you have some pretty epic tattoos which one is your favorite i already know i know the answer to this one though she's gonna tell you a bunch of them but her favorite well you answered your question no go ahead you seem to know she she literally told me like she she says it all the time like this is literally my favorite tattoo she literally says it like that she says the barrel tattoo is our favorite tattoo i think that is my favorite tattoo so i think cool. the majin vegeta one yeah i before i got barreled it was definitely vegeta i don't know i really the like the one's one cool too. too though like the my, my ezekiel mm -hmm. skull i don't know if you can so see cool it. Like but life breathing out be, of lungs. But you know i honestly i get the most compliments on my dragonfly because it's like so like realistic looking and stuff so i don't know i feel like maybe it depends on what i'm wearing too like sure. you know but how it looks against my tattoo or, or whatever but i think meaning wise probably barreled and it's so well done too my 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 tattoo artist like she ate <laughs> <laughs> all right let's see uh what what is something that steven got you into that you would never have discovered on your own ah Probably Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball is a good one, but honestly, a, a more recent endeavor that she was like, she kind of did and then never did, and now mm -hmm. she always does is Pokemon Go. Go. Yeah, yeah, Pokemon Go. She's like completely into it now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, has Steven stepped up his laundry game? Steven does a lot of things very well. I take it to the laundry room. I open the washing machine. Don't lie. You don't even do I don't that. even do that anymore. But what he does do is... <laughs> I've actually regressed. He <laughs> he puts away all of his hung and folded clothes, and he puts away the folded towels. And so, I gather the hangers. I mean, honestly, sometimes. putting away laundry is like half the battle. That is always... Honestly, I hate it. She, it I really do. I hate it. I hate so, it. So. Yeah. But honestly, like any day where she's doing heavy amounts of laundry or heavy... Anytime where that's happening, I'm the one... Like I'm in the kitchen. Like I, I think I cooked yes. every meal last week. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't... Yeah. We don't really have like set chores, I would say. No. He's definitely... In my opinion... Because like, yes, I work also, but Steven's job is so physically demanding and like he works in the Florida sun. I feel like it is just naturally more fair for me to do more around the house. But even with that, he's still like, 
he still does dishes. He still like cleans up. He still he does a lot of he if does you, a decent amount. Of if cooking. you need the house cleaned up while you're still asleep and there's family coming over at one that day, yeah. I'm your guy. Yeah, he will. He will. And again, he's super hands on father and very attentive husband. And he he does a lot of things very, very well. Laundry is just not one of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right. Kristen. So those are all of our questions for the, for the day, uh, for the night. Tina, how do you feel and when? I, I think my brain and my mouth did really, really well. I think you nailed it. I think I think we did this. Um, She's got a good head on her shoulders. That's right. Uh, so every week we end the show talking about what we're going to do, uh, you know, this this next week with our various projects and such. Let's start with Tina. Tina, what are you going to do this week? What are you going to work on? What do you have going on with yourself? Well, I have a new assistant starting with me tomorrow, so uh -huh. it'll be nice to, you know, kind of get into the groove of things and and see what what she needs from me as her mentor. So I'm looking forward to that. Very I'm cool. That's awesome. Into that. Yeah. Heck yeah. It is gonna be exciting. She's gonna do great though. She's already yeah. she already has the skills. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I'm nice. That's good to know. All right, Stephen, what are you gonna do this week? I'm gonna keep pushing on those pages, man. I I think I think I'm in the. I might be on twelve or thirteen now. So I mean, that's it's pretty. We're we're we're, we're getting there, man. We're really getting there with this issue. This yeah. issue is like sneaking up on me. Yeah, we're really we're process. on the halfway point now with the art, which is really cool. That's yeah. that's always exciting. I'm going, dude. I'm going to work on a little bit of coloring this week with, uh, you know, with the pages that you've sent me. I also, I have, I only have like a week and a half, two weeks to do this editing thing that I'm doing. And someone, someone hired me to do. You should just focus on that. Editing work. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm focused. I'm focusing on that. Like I focused on that this week and like, it's been cool. It's kind of, it's fun to be like, Oh, someone, you know, values my opinion and, you know, thoughts enough to, to, you know, work on their book like this. This is really cool. So it, it, it feels nice. It was, it was rewarding and, you know, I'm, I'm getting it done and it's going to help me with uh, my, my bills and such throughout the summer a bit. So that'll be cool. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what I'm going to do this week. I'll probably do a little bit of coloring if I can really, I started coloring um, the space page. Mostly I just started like setting it up, like, you know, the first page and like getting mm -hmm. it going. Do you think it'd be easier if I resent some of those tiffs without any of my lighting effects? Or do you think the lighting effects are? Um, I mean, that is. I easier. think might... it's easier in general. Yeah, I can. Do, it's literally just clicking a layer off, and then I can yeah. keep that layer. And then when you give me, because all I do when you give me your flats, I just drop it underneath and multiply. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah, dude. Yeah, if you do that, that would make it easier than you know than anything else. So I, that way, I can do my lasso situation, and the magic won't mm -hmm. you know matter. Just um, anywhere where you see magic, just you don't have to go crazy with it. True. You know what I'm saying, I, I, just know that. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll do that for you. Go ahead. Awesome. No, thank you. Um, so that's what we're going to do this week. Uh, Tina, it was incredible having you on the show and talking to you always. as always. I freaking love you so much. I feel like this is one of our best episodes ever already. And I, if if you agree, comment below. If you disagree, never watch our show again. How dare you get this far in the episode and not love Tina? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Tina, Tina is, is the catalyst. We literally called her the ostrich goddess during this episode. So, <laughs> no. But, but Tina, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, and thank I you. you. Thanks for oh. including me. Of course. Uh, yeah, we were happy to invite you. <laughs> we <laughs> Because that's how this happens. All our ideas. Definitely our idea. Um, but thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for participating in this colony and asking your questions and making it this far in the episode and supporting our various projects. Uh, you know, comment below. Let us know what kind of things you like to, you know, hear. Also, remember to comment about the ending of that story because it's going to be bothering me until I figure out what to do with this. But I did get some really valuable, awesome input from my incredible friends here who are much better and smarter than I am. So thank you guys. Uh, Stephen, what do you want? What do you want to say to the people before we go? Thank you so much for just being our friends and just being incredible and being awesome. That's already more than enough, but you guys always go steps and steps further. And we just appreciate each and every one of you so very much. Um, I hope this episode was entertaining. I hope we did not fail you in that, in that situation. I hope my songs blessed your ear, your ear holes in a way that was most pleasing. I love you guys. Tina. What would you like to say to the people before we go? Well, I, for one, really love what you do to my ear holes. So. Anyway, this is Jen. We have issues. I'm Anthony. <laughs> I'm Stevie Wildcard. I'm Jen Zena. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Boom. Bazoom.
doing this. It's going to be a very special episode starring Tina. Tina Tad. Here they are. We're waiting for them to connect. Can you guys see me when it's connecting? I don't know. Does that work? Probably can't. You can probably see me. You can probably hear me too. I'm just hanging out, playing Nintendo. They're doing super inappropriate Louis C.K. esque things. <laughs> Come on. Which, like, they're just being funny. Like, they're telling jokes. They're telling jokes to each other. Oh, it's because of the alert. That's stupid. Hold on. What alert? Can you hear us? Yep. I hear you now. What's up? So the reason I was talking to you that whole time, but since I didn't clear the alert that you told me you were recording, it wouldn't it wouldn't give you access to our mic or our video. I was wondering. I was sitting here talking. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know what they're doing, but it's they don't love me anymore. For some reason, you're that you're would never be true. Thank you. It better not be. For some reason, your video is a little. Does, do I look choppy to you guys? No. No. I wonder why. Let me see. I mean, I don't. It's not my internet. That's brighter. Maybe that's better. It's still a little choppy. I don't know why. I mean, it's not a big deal. We'll work through it. We'll figure it out. I'm not. I just want to see because you guys are. I mean, t we have Tina. My new vinyl. Look at my new vinyl record holder, dude. Oh, that's amazing. Holy crap. He built it. Well, I didn't like I I ordered it and built it, but he yes. ordered it and built it. And I I'm helped cut by that. sitting there and watching him. Yeah, I'm gonna cut that and, part and, out. And I, he built it. He built <laughs> with his mitts. And then Tina gets to sit in the new computer chair. I'm the queen. But Tina gets the boom this Tina episode. Gets the boom this episode. I'm gonna let her have it. I'm gonna let her have good. the boom. I think she took it, Steven. I don't think it was up to you this I time. I think she took the boom. I think she just literally at the boom. episode on the shocked faces that we That's what I'm gonna do hundred percent. That's beautiful. <laughs> that was the best face. And it was such a low, it was a boom. <laughs> and I was like, buzzing your it was such a what perfect, did she like, just do? It was a low energy, like I'm gonna steal this from you. Boom. It was this is the best. <laughs> Subtle and beautiful. It was like a Kip. If Kip from Napoleon Dynamite stole Napoleon Dynamite's boom, boom that's what he would say. Boom. You're just jealous because I'm booming better than you. <laughs> but 